Hello everyone, my name is Ramesh Chuk. Today in chapter 4, we are going to cover few more basic concepts of card and payment. One is the BIN, what is a BIN? And the other one, few of the ISO fields, 3 or 4. So that when we are discussing about some other topic and we are using these terms, you should be able to understand what we are referring to. So let's start to understand what is the BIN and what is, you know, few of the ISO fields. BIN. What is the BIN number? The BIN is stands for Bank Identification Number. So the name itself, you know, giving us some clue to understand what exactly BIN means. So BIN is something, a number, okay, which is a 4 to 6 digit of number, which can be used to identify a particular bank. I will give you an example. There is one of the bank, Bank A, which is an issuer bank. They want to issue the cards, okay. They want to give plastic credit cards to the, their customer. So how can they, you know, start issuing the uh, cards? So one issuing bank is there. Those who want to issue the, the cards. Now they will contact the payment scheme. Because as I told in one of my video, payment scheme is the processor is a gateway between the acquiring and issuing bank. So they are the actual owner of all the card bills. Now what will happen? This issuer bank will contact the payment system. They will initiate a project. They will you know, do some business agreements so that they can get an issuing bill from the payment system and they can start creating the cards and they can you know, start their business, the banking business. So what will happen? This payment system, after all the business agreement, whatever is there they will sign all the business agreement and then this issuing bank will get a particular bin that for example the bin is 4 1 2 3 4 5 as I said the 6 digit if you have a plastic card right now in your pocket you can check there are there is a 16 digit card number so the first 6 digit of your card number is actually a bin number of an issuing bank based on this bill number this payment system can identify this particular card belongs to which bank so this is a card number up to 16 digit but the first six digit we are taking which is the bill number of a particular issuing bank so now let's understand like this bank issuing bank they contacted payment system they have got a bill now how they will issue the because as I said, the card number length is 16 digit. So when I'm saying the bin is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So whichever card this bank is going to issue, that card should start with this bin. If we want to see the range, then what will be the range? Let's suppose the full range of this bin, if this bank is going to use, then this will be 10 more zero you have to add here. Right, so now this becomes 16 digit 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all zeros and now this is 9. Now, what exactly it means? This issuing bank can issue the cards in between these two ranges only so this is the range starting from this ending this so this issuing bank can issue the card of this bin range so what will happen let's suppose you have a card of this bin range 4 1 2 3 4 5 then 0 0 0 0 0 0 and 0 0 0 1 this is your card number for example now you go to a post machine wherever you go the acquiring bank will check this six digit of number okay they will based on the 6 digit number acquiring bank will identify this particular bin belongs to this payment system it could be visa for example we are taking visa so they will send it to visa now since visa has issued this particular bin to this bank so visa knows that right they have their own setup 
in their setup they are maintaining some matrix bank A P bin number 412345 so they will search they will find yes they have to forward this request to issuing bank so this is how the bin number logic works now if we understand so the same thing apply on the acquiring side also but the story will be different i'll give you one example and so that we understand how different bin numbers can be used so let's understand one example we are now using four different bins so just we are referring four different bin 1 2 3 4 and these bins are belongs to four different issuing bank a b c d these are issuing bank and there is one acquiring bank which is bank e now what happened customer those who are having the card of these four different banks they went to the post machine of bank e so all the four customer you know they did the transaction at four different different times so this bank e acquiring bank will receive a transaction from all those four cards they will identify first of all the bin they will say bin 1 bin 2 bin 3 bin 4 there are four different bins all these bin belongs to one payment system they will route simply the transaction to the payment system now it is payment system duty to understand this bin and route this request to different different issuing logic this is about issuing how on the other side we have acquiring bank so acquiring bank when they want to start the acquiring of particular payment system they would also contact the payment system right so this payment system will issue one particular acquiring bin to this bank also here in this example we are taking 4 and 5 times 2 so this is the acquiring bin of bank e when this bank will route the transaction to payment system based on the card number payment system will see this is belongs to this particular issuing bank and based on this bin this payment system will identify this particular transaction they are receiving from bank e which is an acquiring bank so this acquiring bin in data element there are iso data element we receive it in data element 32 so this is the overall transaction flow how payment system basically issue the bin number to an issuer bank and an acquirer bank because they are in the middle they should understand from where they are receiving a transaction and to which bank they should route the transaction so now let's discuss about iso field but before we start with that we need to understand why we need iso fields for example if you are talking to someone the language which you know and the other guy knows both of you that language you will use to communicate your message to speak to that guy right so it means eventually when two person are talking to each other they are using some language to communicate the same logic applies here also for example this is a acquirer and this is a post machine there is a network layer in between these two right so when this post wants to talk to the acquirer they need some language the same here between a acquirer and payment system and payment system between issuer so everywhere we have this network wherever we have the network it means we are sending some information through the network so that that can reach to the destination <coughs> when this post machine a card is swiped on the post terminal or any other terminal atm terminal it can be any mobile post terminal this post terminal will build a message it will capture the card number it will capture the amount it will capture the merchant name it will capture so many other things which we will cover slowly but yes for now to understand this they will build one message they will send it to acquirer so acquirer will understand okay this is the card number this is the amount of the transaction this is the pin this is chip data so acquirer will also understand that they will apply their own logic they will modify a few of the fields they will add update whatever they will also do their part they will send it to payment scheme so the same payment scheme also will do so when we are saying like each entity when they are sending the message to the next level they are using the some of the standard field which is the international organization of standardization 
so there are some international standard fields which can be used by each of these entity so that they can pass their message to the next layer now one thing we need to understand when the communication happen between acquirer and payment system they use one common specification so that when they are building a message to in order to send it to payment scheme they should use some specific format so this format is exchange between payment system and acquirer then the same here okay when acquirer is sending it to payment system they will use one particular format so that they can under payment system can understand now when payment system is sending to issuer they will also use some standard format of these messages so that they can also understand the same applies here so everywhere there is one agreement prior to this setup like this particular entity should use this format in order to send that message so one is sender one is receiver right in each case this is sender this is receiver this is sender this is receiver so the sender should send in a particular format so that receiver can understand the same logic if i am talking in english or hindi or french if the other guy understand they know the language then only they can receive my messages which i am communicating the same applies here also now we will cover only few fields for this session i will keep it very short because we are going to use those two or three fields in the coming sessions there is a big list of iso fields but we will be covering slowly whenever we need a particular iso field to understand because we are going to use in one of the video so that time we will cover those iso field so that when we are using it you should be able to understand you should be able to refer it so for this session we will cover only three or four uh, iso fields so let's start with the first field which is message type indicator mti we normally call it as the data element 000 because this is the base element of any message without this particular data element a message cannot be constructed it means a sender cannot send it to receiver without having this data element in the authorization request or message which we are sending from sender to receiver so mti is message type indicator now i will give you only few example one is 0 100 the other one is 0 120 i will explain you what is this when you are doing a transaction at the post terminal so they construct a message with a request type 100 okay so it means eventually when you are doing a purchase so that purchase the first field of that purchase request mti would be 100 so based on 100 the other party will understand this is a normal request message this is the purchase request message how there is another field which the other system the receiver will use to actually understand the uh, message type or the transaction type but for example 100 is one of the supported mti so the request 100 and the response is plus 10 you can simply plus 10 to the 100 this is 100 and 10 so it means from post we will trigger a 100 message this will reach to acquirer acquirer will send it to payment system payment will uh, payment system will send it to issuer if issuer finds everything well if they are able to validate all the fields all everything related to customer they will send an approval 0110 which is 110 they simply add the other one is 0120 for 0120 the response will be 0130 I will explain you now what is 120 and what is 100. I told you this is a normal purchase request, and 120 I will explain you. The same way we have 0200, 0220, 0400, 0420. So the response will be 0210, 0230, 0410, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 0400, 
100 is clear the 200 for example when we are sending a transaction from post it can be a 100 and it can be a 200 both depending on which message type they are using which format they are using whether it is a single message dual message yes they can support both 100 and 200 these are for authorization when you are doing a purchase or you are doing a cash withdrawal okay these types of messages are used there now 400 and 420 these are something reversal reversal mean when you did a transaction of 10 dollar on a supermarket but the product you find you know it's not good or there is some problem you again go back to the merchant and you say oh, you want to return it so there is a possibility he can go to the post machine and they can cancel the transaction so when they cancel the transaction post machine will send a cancellation so those cancellations are reversals there is another possibility of cancellation or reversal is which is a time out reversal which we will cover in some other session because that's a big topic to cover so for just to understand 400 means a cancellation or a reversal of your original request your original request where was to debit you you know charge your account with the 10 dollar right with 100 or 200 10 dollar has been deducted from your account let's suppose you had balance of 100 dollar you did a transaction now the balance is 90 dollar but since you cancelled it so we this reversal will go and will again add 10 dollar so your balance will again become 100 dollar so this is the use just to understand they these type of transactions are debiting your account these type of transactions are crediting your account now we will discuss about 120 and 220 message type MTI there are two different examples which we are going to discuss one is offline transaction the other one is the adjustment so first of all we will discuss about offline advice messages there is a post machine and this is acquiring bank now you are trying a post uh, terminal you are trying a transaction at the post terminal and what happens is like the connection between these two goes down so there is no network between the post device application and the acquiring bank application all of a sudden the network goes down so this is the situation when you are doing a transaction at post it eventually cannot reach to the acquiring bank right so when the transaction will not reach here does what does it mean it means it will not reach to the payment system and it cannot reach to the issuer so what will you do will you give the cash to the merchant or obviously the cash is an option for you to give but let's suppose you don't have cash in your pocket so what do you want to do you will ask the merchant if he can approve your transaction offline at the post terminal level there are always a limit for the offline transaction to approve but let's understand the example first so now what happens is because there is no connection you will ask merchant or if merchant is already known to you what he can do there is an option on the post terminal it can approve the transaction offline okay so the instead of the transaction which was supposed to go online the transaction will be approved at the post terminal level only for example if you have done a transaction of 10 dollar that 10 dollar transaction will be approved by post terminal but acquiring bank does not have any information about this 10 dollar this post uh, payment scheme does not have and this issue does not have so it means in this diagram these three party they don't even know about this transaction only post device knows about it so now how this transaction will reach to the acquiring bank and payment system and issuing for this purpose we use 120 or 220 I would again say because whatever I am using in this session the MTIs or I am going to use the processing code these values I am using as a reference from so it could be possible if you are using some other interface any other post terminal or ATM terminal or any M post device you are doing any e-commerce transaction so these things can vary can you know can depend on the specification being used there so this is just for the reference to understand like these type of MTIs are normally used for offline transactions or adjustment 
So now we will understand how this standalone transaction will reach to the issuer. Once this connection will be restored, okay. Now this connection will be restored. Once the connection is restored, means there is again a connection back. <clears throat> the connection was only down here, but I'm just showing it here also. So now what will happen? Once the connection is restored at the post device, they have capability, okay, to now send this transaction as an offline advice to acquiring them. So they will send either as a 0120 or 0220 to the acquiring bank. Then acquiring bank will receive this transaction and will send it to the payment scheme and it will reach to the issuer via payment scheme. So this is how, what, what happened in this diagram? First of all connection was down, the transaction was approved offline, then connection was restored and then the transaction was moved from post machine to the issuer bank. So now in this case one thing we need to understand, this transaction was already approved by post device. So either acquiring bank or issuing bank, they cannot decline this. So this is a global, you know, uh, rule. Uh, this is a mandate by all the payment scheme, especially for Visa, Mastercard. I'm talking about. So once a transaction has been approved by offline at the, any of the terminal, so that transaction once reached to the acquirer or issuer, they should not decline. They should simply accept it. So when this transaction will reach here, acquiring bank will accept it and the issuing bank will also accept. Now adjustment. Adjustment is normally the 0 to 20 message type is only used. But again, as we are talking about only visa, so I would say only 0 to 20, but depending on some other interfaces specification, it can be some other NTA also. So adjustment is you need a transaction of $100. Later, you find you know you want to return something of the value of ten dollar you want to return so it eventually means your actual transaction should be of ninety dollar but hundred dollar transaction has already been done this is already done you return ten dollar amount so now the merchant has option either they can directly give you ten dollar cash if not then they have an option on the post device to perform an adjustment transaction. So what will be the adjustment of 100 transaction will be sent by $90. So it eventually means $10 will be credited. Credited back to your account. And this is also possible because now you are sending the adjustment of you know amount less than the actual amount. The actual amount was 100. Now the adjustment was sent for 90 in this case, you bought something of $100 and you return something. Now this is also possible. You bought something for $100 and now you buy something else of $10. So, so the total cost should be $110 but the transaction was done of $100. So now again you also have a choice to give a cash of $10 or perform a next transaction of $10. Or this is also possible, merchant can do an adjustment using the previous transaction and can, can send an adjustment of 110. So when this adjustment of 110 with original amount $100 will be sent to the issuer, the issuer will debit $10 more to the customer. So 100 was already debited from the customer and now $10 was more will be you know debited to the customer. So when adjustments are done, these MTIs normally M220 is used. So this is the use of adjustment track. I will briefly tell you the format of uh, data element uh, 0 which is MTI. I will tell you what format. It's a uh, fixed length BCD 2 byte number. There are 4 digits in MTI. For example, there was 0, 0100 or 0, 0200, right? If you convert any of these into the binary, what will you write? This is for this 0, right? For 2, what will you write? 0, 0, 
one zero, then again zero 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 zero. So this is first byte and this is second byte. So this is the format of message type indicator. It has two bytes of data. This is first byte and this is second byte. So this is a fixed length field. So now the next ISO field is processing code data element 0, 3. This is a 3 byte field where the first byte is transaction type byte 2 and byte 3 this is account from an account to so in this video for us the byte 1 is very important so we will only focus on byte 1 so byte 1 is transaction type this is a field which is used to identify a particular transaction type whether it is a purchase post transaction or it is a cash withdrawal or a balance inquiry or you are doing a reversal so whatever type of transaction so this will field actually helps to find what exactly you know the transaction is <coughs> so quickly i will give you three four examples of this value Zero 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 one and zero two. This is a purchase. Zero one is cash withdrawal. You can do it from ATM or from post. The cash withdrawal or cash disbursement transaction. And the third one is adjustment. Now this is only the processing code so earlier we discussed MTI now the combination of the MTI with this is 0 100 or 0 200 can be anything again depending on which interface which specification we are using normally you can find with 100 or 200 if processing code value 00, 0 means an issuer or any receiver the party which is actually receiving this transaction based on MTA and this they can identify this is a purchase transaction this is just a combination okay <coughs> then 01 is cash withdrawal normally the cash withdrawal is processed with 0200 transaction okay 0200 MTA so 01 combination with 0200 this is normally processed as a cash withdrawal but again depending on different specification it may uh, MTI now the same case with adjustment also normally these are processed with 220 so 0 to 220 means this is an adjustment transaction so this could be possible when we are receiving a processing code 00 with the message type indicator of 0 120 or 0 220 so this is an offline advice this is an offline purchase transaction these are online transaction these are directly reaching to the issuer if the same transaction the same M uh, processing code is being done with 120 or 220 it means these are offline purchase transaction being reached to the issuer so this is all about the data element 3 which is processing code now we will understand data element 39 response code in my previous example we discussed like issuer will send an approval so when we say approval how an issuer will say yes this transaction is approved so there are some possible values there is a data element which is data element 39 this is the ISO field based on this value the transaction can be identified whether it is an approval or a decline the first value i will give you is 00 this is one byte field this is a fixed length one byte field 00 means approval so what it means we send a 0 100 
two payment scheme. This is acquirer. Acquirer sends it to payment scheme. Payment scheme sends it to issuer. When issuer validates, card number is okay, expiry is okay, customer has sufficient balance, PIN is okay, chip data is okay. Issuer will do all those validation and they will send this transaction is approved. So what it means? They will fill the data element 39 with 00. zero. Issuer will say 39 is 00. zero. Data element 000, zero, zero means MTI is 110. So they will send this combination back. The other field will also be there, prop code or data element 32, all the other fields will be there. But based on 39, so issuer will send a response back to payment system. Payment system will read this value and will log in their processor, in their database also as an approval. Acquirer will also receive it. Acquirer will see data element 39. They will see this is approval. They will send it back to POS. Now, since POS is also following their own specification, they will also understand data element 39 is 00, zero means approval. So, they will print the message approval. Now, the customer can take the goods to your home. So, this is the use of data element 39. I hope this session uh, help you understanding you know a little bit about uh, the bin number and few of the ISO field in case you have any question you can write back on my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.